Hello, everyone. I'm here with Atul Shirsagar, and we are going to talk about the Generative AI Gateway. Generative AI Gateway is basically a microservice that provides normalized API for all the generative features and apps that are built on Salesforce. Generative AI Gateway is responsible for uh, integrating with different LLM providers and models and exposing them as a unified API for all the generative apps to work off of. So it takes care of transforming the request and response payloads to and from the vendor specific uh, request response payload to the normalized payload. It takes care of securely managing the credentials uh, and it exposes uh, its APIs in a very Salesforce native fashion. What is the flow through the gateway and what happens in each of those steps out to the LLM? There are two versions of it. So maybe I'll start with a simpler version and then- And then we uh, add can, to it. Let's assume that this is just a very simple prompt uh, that starts from Salesforce UI and that prompt is well-formed. But what I mean by well-formed is that all the required information in that prompt is already present in that prompt. That prompt uh, is now taken from Salesforce UI or, or any other component and is passed over Connect API. Connect API then essentially calls the generative AI gateway. It's a separate microservice that can scale horizontally and that once it receives the request, uh, first it needs to decide uh, which LLM provider is this request meant to go for. So it will look at the headers, it will look at the request body, it will route that uh, request to an appropriate handler. Okay. Before it gets to that handler, we we introduce certain uh, pre-processing that happens. And this is where the trust layer comes in. Okay. Uh, this is where we are doing uh, PII masking, right? So we would make sure that the sensitive information within that prompt is not going to go outside of Salesforce boundaries. Right. Uh, because these models are running outside of Salesforce network boundaries and we don't want sensitive customer information to flow out. We'll do PII masking. Right? PCI masking, PHI masking. So different categories of data uh, will be masked. And then that prompt is then uh, going to be sent to uh, the model. But before it is sent to the model, LLM Gateway is responsible for converting that payload that has come in, which is a normalized payload. Remember the one that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Now it needs to be transformed into uh, the vendor specific uh, request payload. Okay. And that transformation uh, happens after the PIM masking is done. Uh, okay. We will transform, do the transformation, and then that request is sent over using the appropriate uh, security credentials for that particular LLM provider and yep. model. And, and then the request is sent back, uh, sent to the model. So that's if the prompt has everything in it, but we know that oftentimes it doesn't. So maybe let, let's go to that scenario next. Right. Right. And that is where our prompt engine comes into picture. Now you have a prompt template, right? Uh, what I mean by template is that it is a partially formed prompt, which has certain placeholders or uh, slots in there, which mm -hmm. needs to be filled, right? Uh, and and uh, the way we do it is using merge fields, very well known to uh, Salesforce community, how you yes. use merge fields is the exact same way. And uh, what happens now, now you get a prompt template, you know that there, that needs to be hydrated. Mm -hmm. and, and this prompt template has associated with it multiple data providers. This data providers could be, uh, hey, uh, page context or entity data provider. So depending on which page you are, mm -hmm. you know which entity you're dealing with and, and you get that information. Or you could have um, data coming in from any other CRM uh, uh, entities that you wish to do. Yep. Or data Apex. data cloud, right, as well? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Apex, Flow, Data Cloud, uh, ML invocations, which would go to vector database and then look for semantically important and relevant information. It will get, get all of that. And then it runs through this resolution mechanism because there are data providers, there are these merge fields. Each data provider is providing some bit of information. Mm -hmm. And then it gets that information. It hydrates that. That means it resolves those merge fields to the values that the data provider has actually provided. Out Got comes it. prompt, which is fully, fully formed and ready to be sent over to the gateway. And then the same process takes over. Got but it. yeah, this piece of uh, data hydration or uh, data retrieval and prompt hydration is is critical. And that's, that's one of our uh, secret sources. So let's talk about the reverse. So we have our response from the LLM. 
it's received back in the gateway, and then what happens? Oh yeah, so now you get the response back from uh, LLMs. First thing that uh, LLM gateway needs to do is that now do the reverse transformation. Now you got a response back from LLM in their specific format. It needs to be transformed into the normalized response payload that all of our clients are expecting. Uh, but before uh, it sends it back, it runs it through a toxicity filter. Okay. So now you get the response and this response is sent through our toxicity filter to know the uh, scores for different categories, right? Uh, is it safe? Is it, uh, I mean, a bunch of things that you know about racism, sexism, any other kind of negativity that can prop in. So we will score this generation against all these uh, uh, categories. Another important thing happens before we send this data back uh, to the client. What we do is we capture this prompt and generation mm -hmm. as an audit trail and store it in our feedback store. Okay. And, and we'll, we'll come to the, how we tie it back to the human, human feedback. But the first important step that happens here is we need to capture uh, the prompt and the generation mm -hmm. along with the toxicity score and store it so that later we can use it for feedback. Now, ah. once this is done, now the now the response is ready to be sent back to the client for them to uh, visualize and display it in whatever fashion uh, they seem fit. And where does the demasking happen? Because I know that it happened on the way out, oh, but on the way in, where does that happen? Great. And I missed that part. <laughs> so uh, after, uh, before doing the toxicity um, uh, uh, scoring, we do the demasking. So we have done the masking of uh, PII information. And, and at that time, we maintain this uh, dictionary of tokens uh, that have been replaced there, right, uh, to the actual values. And when the response comes back and we see that that particular token exists in that, you would replace it back with the actual value that was present in the incoming prompt. Now we're going to do a bit of a lightning round on demystifying some buzzwords. Um, so I'm going to say one of the buzzwords that's in a lot of the things I think a lot of us see about the generative gateway. If you can reply with a sentence or two sentences about what it means in language that you think everyone can understand, um, and we'll go through about five of these. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Secure data retrieval. Secure data retrieval means that we would be able to retrieve uh, tenant-specific data only for that tenant, and you cannot have a commingling of data from other tenant to the other, uh, some other tenant. So making sure tenant boundaries are, are, are adhered to. Dynamic grounding. Hmm. So uh, dynamic grounding or in general grounding essentially means finding the relevant information uh, from CRM getting that data and uh, enhancing your prompts uh, with that data so that LLMs have the con right context to generate a response. Data masking. Data masking is um, uh, basically making sure that the sensitive information that's in the prompt doesn't go out. So you remove that particular piece of text from the prompt and replace it with certain tokens, which are just a placeholder. Toxicity detection. Toxicity detection is understanding um, whether the generated text uh, has some undesirable uh, traits in it, like uh, sexist or racist or kind of uh, things, and, and scoring them on, on those scale from Got zero it. to one. Yeah. Auditing. Auditing is uh, essentially tracking all the prompts and generations so that in case there is any kind of dispute or uh, uh, anyone raises any kind of issue, then we can go back and see that what is the prompt and what was generated and where could the mistake be, whether it's a model's mistake or it was the data that was incorrectly sent or anything else in between. Zero retention. Oh, yeah, that is a big one. Uh, zero retention is essentially saying that the providers that we rely on, the partners like OpenAI, uh, they do not retain the data that we send to them. Here, the data means the prompt that we are sending to them. They do not retain it in any shape or form. They do not use it for training their models. They do not store it in their logs. They do not store it even for the moderation purposes that they usually do. 
for uh, human uh, evaluations. Well, thank you so much, Atul. This has been wonderful. We hope to have you back here very soon. We know you're very busy with all these new features, but I know our architects really appreciate this. 